I would just like to take uh, an opportunity to encourage you um, with uh, the times that we are in. Uh, in Psalm 42 and 43, um, those two psalms go together, but I'd like to read Psalm 42, and the Bible says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitudes. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the health of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me in my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto my God, my rock, Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now both Psalm 42 and 43 indicate that the psalmist at this particular time has been deprived of attending the house of God. In verse 4 he says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. This is all in the past tense. And so the psalmist, according to verse 2, is thirsting for God. Furthermore, to add to it, in this psalm, he was being attacked by enemies. Now what is interesting in these two psalms is that the writer is dealing with himself during a time of discouragement. Uh, we see that he questions himself about his present spiritual condition. This condition has been properly called by many spiritual depression. In our text we have a record of the psalmist struggles, unhappiness, and his present spiritual depressed condition at the time those words were penned. Now a reason why the book of Psalms is such a great value to us is because we are encouraged to see that the writers were honest with themselves and their struggles. Where we find the psalmist talking to himself, analyzing his condition, and seeking to find help in the Lord. And by the way, that is what we should all do at this time. Now generally speaking, what we find in this psalm are three common areas that affect a person's spiritual condition before God. We find that our thoughts often uh, discourage us. Our circumstances also discourage us. And also our adversaries discourage us. Now these three areas always negatively impact our spiritual condition ultimately they're all rooted in the same thing and that root cause of spiritual depression is always unbelief so we find that it is because we do not appropriately deal with our thoughts that we go down into spiritual depression it is because we do not adequately respond to our unfor unforeseen circumstances that we go down into spiritual depression it is because we listen to the devil instead of listening to God that we go down into spiritual depression. In Psalm 42, you find three questions that are asked. In verse 2, the question is, when shall I come and appear before God? And here he's talking about, when is it that I'm going to have an opportunity to go back to the house of God? He was depressed by his circumstances. In verse 3, the question of the enemy is, where is thy God? 
And again in verse 10, where is thy God? That's being depressed by adversaries. But then in verse 5, and then later in verse 11, he repeats, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? And that is depressed thoughts. You see, there is one answer to such a question. Uh, whether we are affected by our circumstances, and certainly the times that we live in right now, uh, can cause us to be spiritually depressed. Uh, our own thoughts, uh, much time left with ourselves, as we have things that we begin to think about, and it affects our, our spiritual condition. There's a reply in verse 5 and verse 11, and that is this, hope thou in God. The answer to all those questions is this, hope thou in God. But I want to furthermore point something out that I believe that will encourage you. In verse 5, after he asked the question, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Notice, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. But then in verse number 11, again he says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. You see a difference here in verse 5 and verse 11 between God's countenance and then my countenance. Certainly times like this when we are uh, depressed by our circumstances or can become depressed by our own thoughts or by our, our adversaries in a time like this people say, well, where is God? We can think to ourselves, when is this thing going to uh, stop? Uh, we can also ask ourselves, uh, when is this going to change? When am I going to be able to go back uh, to the house of God? Well, the simple reply is, hope thou in God. Certainly, uh, those things can affect our demeanor. Uh, they can be reflected in our lives on a daily basis. And what we need to do is turn our attention on God, to hope in God. You see, when we are affected by circumstances, we need to be reminded that God is not affected by circumstances. When we are depressed by our own thoughts, we must recognize that our thoughts need to be turned toward God. Uh, and when uh, we are depressed by our adversaries or by those who say, where is God in such a time? Uh, we need to turn to the God of the Bible and be encouraged uh, to what he says in the truths of his word. You see, we will be encouraged in verse 5 by his countenance. He says at the end of verse 4, or, or at the end of verse 5, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Our countenance in verse number 11 is only turned to joy and peace when it is turned to God's countenance. And I would like just to take this moment to encourage you, whether you can be discouraged with your own thoughts, whether you can be discouraged by your own circumstances, uh, by being prevented to go and do what you need to be doing and to go to the house of God, what you can be discouraged by your adversaries and by the voices of the world uh, that try to criticize any who has their hope in God. I would like to turn your attention to God's countenance. God is unmoved, He is unmovable, and you must place your confidence in Him during such a time. And so the message of encouragement today is this, Hope Thou in God.